much of tonight will concentrate on France, on the disastrous turn of events in Francophone Africa, where country after country is literally kicking France out the door after centuries of exploitation, of humiliation, of ongoing economic subjugation, even when the tricolor was run down the flagpole and the flags of nominally independent countries was run up, France continued to dominate everything meaningful in the lives of their former colonies in West Africa. The language remained French. The currency remained the French currency, in this case, nowadays, the franc. The bank guarantees, the gold deposits are all in the vaults in Paris. Countries like Niger, where a military uprising, backed, it seems, by millions of the population of that country, has overthrown a French puppet government, as has happened in neighboring country after country over this last period. France has counted on its soft power and the corruption of the political class in its former colonies to keep it in the peacock position. But these days are rapidly coming to an end, and France is now openly threatening military action to overturn the usurpers who overthrew and now hold as a prisoner in the presidential palace the former puppet ruler of Niger. As I said on Sunday, Niger is a much more important country than most people have given it credit for. In fact, many people, including people who definitely should know better, continue to confuse Niger and Nigeria. The spelling of Nigerian is not the same as the spelling of a Nigerian. Get it right, Mr. Pundit, if you're going to pontificate on very important, significant events that are unfolding. And they are these. That 80% of every light that's burning in France this evening is powered by the uranium sent to France at measly prices by the poor people of Niger whose uranium it originally was, who dug it, who processed it, and who sent it to France at a fraction of the price that it was worth, and that price paid in French currency for that matter. 80% of all the lights in France are powered by Niger, but only 20% of the people of Niger have any electricity at all. Just ponder that. But the worm is turning in Africa, you see. The new generation of military officers, like that incredible, fine 35-year-old leader of Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Traore, you saw him in Moscow. You saw his arrival back in Ouagadougou to a crowd of scores of thousands of jubilant people. Young officers are no longer prepared to tolerate the mass impoverishment of their own citizens for the enrichment of a tiny ruling elite and its small comprador to the ultimate benefit of the former colonial power in France. So if France has recourse to military action to overturn the outcome of the uprising in Niger, they may be biting off far more than they can chew. For they will not only be fighting the armed forces of Niger, they'll be fighting not only some of their neighboring countries, who have declared that any attack on Niger will be an attack on them and that they will send their armed forces to fight France and anyone who joins France in a military aggression against Niger. But they 
most important of all the new factors is that the chief of staff of the Algerian army, Niger's northern neighbor, the chief of staff flew at a moment's notice to Moscow yesterday and spent the day with the Russian Minister of Defense and the chiefs of the armed forces of Russia. Algeria has a long, long friendship with Russia. Going back to the days when the French were murdering Algerians in Algeria and in Paris, when the Algerian people were forced to give up the lives of more than a million of their people to achieve their independence from a French colonial situation in which France pretended that Algeria was literally, actually a part of France, even though it was in Africa. Who supported the FLN? Who supported the heroes of the Algerian revolution? Who armed them? Who funded them? Who proselytized for them? Who propagandized for them? Yes, the same country that did the same for Mozambique, for Angola, for Zimbabwe, for Namibia, and of course, most importantly of all, for the Republic of South Africa. They wonder why Russia is popular in Africa and France and Britain and Belgium and the other colonists are unpopular. How could it be otherwise? So Algeria's long defense treaty relationship with Russia is such that when Algeria says that it will not stand by if Niger is attacked by the colonial powers, you can be sure that they will do so with the full support of Russia. Russian arms, maybe Russian fighters. I understand that the Wagner Group are currently out of work with the whole panoply of Russian state power in its ironclad alliance with China may soon be involved in a conflict in a tiny African country before last week many had never heard of and certainly could not place on a map. So World War III might not be triggered in the Persian Gulf, might not be triggered in the Straits of Taiwan, might not be triggered on the steppe in the Ukraine. It might, after all, be triggered in Africa, in West Africa, where the proxy ECOWAS, the armed forces of the West African states, controlled, organized, and funded by the United States and France end up at war with their neighbors, backed by Russia, another new flashpoint arising in the world 